So under no-fault divorce, what must be alleged, approved, in order to obtain a divorce? You don't have to prove really much. You do a bare-bones <coughs> petition for dissolution of marriage or for separation. It's jurisdictional. It's where the parties live. Have you lived here for six months? Um, you have to meet the residency requirement. And then there is actually something called proof at the end of the case, and that's jurisdictional as well. So what's alleged in the petition for dissolution, the court picks up in the proof interrogatories before the court enters a decree to ensure that, again, you've met the residency requirements, that the um, female party is not pregnant um, because the court won't enter a divorce if a party's pregnant unless the uh, putative father comes in and, and testifies that he is actually the father and the husband isn't, which I've had happen back in my early days, mm. which was quite a surprise. Mm. Um, so you need to know a little bit of the ins and outs. That's one example of, of knowing what you're in for before you walk in the courtroom. So, so the, the, the basic situation is the marriage is, and the, the magic word is, irretrievably broken? An irretrievable breakdown. And what is interesting is that only one party has to say that the marriage is broken. And the other party says, well, what if I don't agree? And the answer is, I'm sorry. That's not what the law is. The law is it takes one party to say it's over, and then it's over. So one spouse cannot successfully prevent the other from obtaining They can divorce. try really hard, though. <laughs> make it incredibly long and incredibly expensive. And those are really tough cases because the one, the one party wants, wants finality, um, and the other party just says, I'm, I'm not ready for this, and eventually come around. And those, those are hard cases to mediate, too. But I, I think that um, a, a well-trained mediator could get someone, try to get someone at least to an agreement. Interesting.